conflict. It's inevitable in every marriage, although sometimes us conflict avoiders try to pretend there's no conflict, but that doesn't end well either because then you just let resentment blossom and take hold. Here's the deal. I want to give you a different way of looking at conflict because naturally our human tendency is to think, okay, I've got to convince the other person to agree with me and so I've got to argue my point and then of course your husband's thinking the same thing that he's going to win this argument and get you to see it his way and and so it, that this just doesn't end well because the battle just keeps on going back and forth, right? So let me give you a different way of framing this, a way of rethinking the goal of the conflict. The goal is not I win, you lose. That doesn't really end well because usually the dominant person is always the winner, uh, the the meeker person in the relationship is always the loser, and this is not a good dynamic. What if you approach your husband and say, you know what, let's start working on developing a compromise, on brainstorming a compromise when we have a disagreement. And this is the essence of Philippians 2 verse 4, which says each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. So this means you actually try to hear and understand what your husband's perspective is. You ask him to hear and understand what your perspective is on any given situation. And then you brainstorm, because you guys are smart, you brainstorm a compromise, a solution that represents some of the top needs and desires and interests and concerns of you both. Let me give you two examples here. One, a personal example where my husband and I were in a big disagreement a couple of years ago about what to do for Christmas for our adult children. We have five adult children and eight grandchildren and it was getting so expensive to buy all the presents for the grandkids and the adult children and my husband, his love language is not gifts, mine is. He says, we don't need to give any more gifts to our adult children. We're done with that. I'm like, what? They're not gonna feel loved. This is horrible. This is breaking my heart. I have to give them gifts. They're gonna not feel loved if I don't give them gifts. And, and so we're in this tizzy. And so we decided to brainstorm a compromise, something that would represent the desires and needs and concerns of us both. And what we came up with is we would give our children a night off from all of their children, our grandchildren. We would take the grandchildren to a special event, the lights of Christmas, and 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 that would create a memory that would be really cool for the grandchildren and give the adult children a night off. And, and it felt good to me that I was, maybe not my perfect plan, but that I was giving my children something and my grandchildren a great memory. He felt like we weren't just throwing money away on gifts that they didn't need and it worked for both of us. Let me give you another example. And this would be in one of those tricky areas where you think there's no way we can compromise in this area because my husband's asking me to do something wrong. Let's say your husband wants you to look at pornography with him and you're thinking, okay, there's no way we're gonna compromise on this. Well, let me, again, help you to see this from a different perspective. Sit down with your husband and say, I see that you want to do this. I don't feel comfortable with that particular option, but let's talk about what your deepest needs and concerns and desires are here. Because maybe your husband just wants to spice up your sex life. Could you guys brainstorm? And I'm not going to come up with ideas for you, but I mean, could you brainstorm how to spice up your sex life without going against your concerns that looking at pornography is immoral. And maybe you're gonna end up, I don't know, uh, every once in a while sending the kids to grandma's and going to a hotel and just having a little adventure there. Or maybe you're going to, I don't know, you know, again, send the kids to grandma's and, and make love in a different portion of the house or I don't know, whatever it might be that would be okay with you, okay with him, maybe meet some of his desires in this, but also takes care of your concerns. See what I mean? It's looking at it from the other person's perspective, being willing to consider their perspective and asking them to consider yours and then brainstorming because you guys are smart brainstorming a solution that addresses both of your concerns give that a try